Ever wonder why the Middle Ages were so middle? You know, sandwiched right in the center of history like a juicy piece of ham and a well-stacked sandwich? Well, wonder no more because we are about to delve into the bountiful world of history, unearthing 10 wonderful and perhaps a tad bit quirky facts. So, are you ready to swap your reality for a dollop of the past? Well, fasten your seatbelts because we're about to embark on a time-traveling adventure. So, about that question, the Middle Ages weren't actually in the middle of anything. Now hold your horses, history buffs, and let me explain. The term Middle Ages was coined around the 15th century and was meant to signify a period between two other epochs, namely the glorious Roman era and the then burgeoning Renaissance. But here's the kicker. Time isn't a sandwich, and the Middle Ages weren't the ham in between two slices of historical bread. In reality, the Middle Ages spanned for about a thousand years from the 5th to the 15th century. That's a whole heap of time, folks. And if you look at history on a timeline, you'll see that the Middle Ages aren't in the middle of anything. They're more like the awkward teenage phase of human history. So, next time someone tells you they wish they lived in the Middle Ages, remind them it wasn't actually in the middle. Speaking of misconceptions, did you know that Napoleon wasn't actually short? Yes, contrary to popular belief, Napoleon Bonaparte, the French military leader, did not have to look up to most of his contemporaries. The confusion around his height stems from a difference in measurement systems. You see, in French units Napoleon was listed as 5 foot 2, which sounds quite shrimpish to us. But hold your horses, because the French foot was longer than the English one. In English units Napoleon was about 5 foot 7, which was actually slightly above average for a Frenchman in the early 19th century. So why do we all picture Napoleon as this tiny, angry Frenchman? Well, it seems that British cartoonists of the time liked to depict him that way for comedic effect, and thus, a historical myth was born. Turns out Napoleon was just suffering from a case of bad PR. And while we're on the topic of debunked myths, the Great Wall of China isn't visible from space. I know, I know, your dreams of becoming an astronaut just to catch a glimpse of this ancient wonder just got crushed. But hear me out. This myth probably started when someone thought, hey, it's the longest structure made by humans so it must be visible from space, right? Well, not exactly. The truth is the wall is only about 30 feet wide, that's less wide than an average city street. Now imagine trying to spot your favorite coffee shop signage from a cruising airplane. Tough, isn't it? Moreover, the materials used for the wall like soil and stone, blend in with the natural landscape. It's like trying to find a chameleon in a jungle. Astronauts have confirmed this, stating they can't see the wall without aid. So, astronauts, you can stop squinting now. From giant pyramids to colossal amphitheaters, let's travel to the heart of the Roman Empire. Yes, we're talking about the gladiators. When you think of these ancient warriors, you probably imagine two men battling it out to the death. But like our previous myths, that's not entirely true. Yes, gladiator fights were brutal and bloody, but they weren't always fatal. Historical evidence shows that most of these fights did not end in death. In fact, the word gladiator comes from the Latin gladius, which means swordsman. Not dead swordsman, just swordsman. The gladiators were valuable assets and their owners would not want to lose them in every fight. They received rigorous training and were fed a high-energy diet to keep them in fighting shape. These were the superstars of their time with fans, fame, and sometimes even fortune. So those gladiator fights? Not as deadly as you thought. Now, let's debunk some myths about the pyramids. You recognize those colossal, exactingly precise stone structures in Egypt? The ones that give the impression of an enormous entity having misplaced their child's toy blocks in a sandy expanse? Precisely those. There's widespread misconception that they were constructed by slaves, however put a pause on your misconceptions, adventure seekers, because it's not accurate. Excavation data reveals that the pyramid builders were, in fact, salaried workers. Indeed, they received compensation, or to put it differently, a bread and beer check since those were the currency of the era. These men were the ancient world's counterpart of a modern-day construction crew, inclusive of supervisors, days off, and health benefits. Granted, ancient health benefits, which primarily comprised of mystical spells and strange mixtures, but it was something nonetheless. And the cherry on the cake? They even possessed their own community, with residences, bread-making places, and beer-producing sites. It was akin to a small-scale city for pyramid builders. So, the next time you envision the pyramid builders, consider them as hard-working individuals, not subjugated laborers. All right, let's sail over to the Vikings. Now, if you're picturing burly men sporting horned helmets and brandishing axes, you might want to hit the brakes on your longship. Contrary to popular belief, Vikings didn't wear horned helmets. 
Yes, you heard me right. Those iconic horned helmets you see in movies, comic books, and Halloween stores are more fiction than fact. The image of the horned Viking warrior is actually a 19th century invention. During that time, artists started to depict Vikings with horned helmets based on archaeological finds of pre-Viking Age helmets with horns. However, these were used for ceremonial purposes, and not in battle. In reality, a Viking's helmet was more likely to be conical, made from hardened leather, and occasionally reinforced with metal. Practical, right? After all, who wants to go into battle with a pair of unwieldy horns on their head? So, Viking cosplay enthusiasts, time to ditch those horns. Next up, Columbus and his supposed discovery. Let's dive into a common misconception that has sailed around the globe faster than Columbus himself. So, you think Christopher Columbus discovered America, right? Well, hold on to your history textbooks because they're about to get a revision. Contrary to popular belief, Columbus was not the first European to set foot on American soil. That honor goes to the Norse explorer Leif Erikson, who arrived nearly 500 years earlier. Yeah, you heard that right. Columbus was late to the party by half a millennium. Moreover, when Columbus did arrive, he didn't even realize he was on a new continent. He thought he had reached the East Indies, hence the name Indians for the native inhabitants. Talk about a massive geographical goof up. And let's not forget the indigenous peoples who were living across the Americas for thousands of years before any Europeans showed up. So, sorry Columbus, but you're not the first. Now let's fly over to Salem. Fasten your seatbelts and ready your broomsticks, folks. Here's a chilling fact to debunk that hot myth you've heard about witches being burned at the stake in Salem. Picture this, it's the late 17th century, and you're in Salem Village, Massachusetts. The air is thick with fear and suspicion. Yes, the infamous Salem witch trials are in full swing. But here's where the plot twist comes. None of the condemned witches were actually burned at the stake. That's right, the Salem witches were not toasted marshmallows. Instead, most of the accused were hanged on Gallows Hill, a less fiery but equally grim fate. One unfortunate soul, Giles Corey, was even crushed under heavy stones for refusing to enter a plea. So next time you're roasting marshmallows over a campfire, remember, the Salem witch trials were less about fire, and more about fear. So, Salem wasn't quite as fiery as we thought. And now, the Iron Maiden. Let's dive into the annals of history, where we often find ourselves face to face with gruesome tales of torture. One such tale is the infamous Iron Maiden, a horrific device designed to pierce the victim's body with sharp spikes. It's often depicted in pop culture as a staple of the Middle Ages, but here's the twist, it didn't exist during that time. That's right folks, the Iron Maiden is a myth. The first recorded appearance of this terrifying contraption was in the 19th century long after the Middle Ages had ended. It was likely created as a sensational exhibit for a museum and boy did it get the attention it sought. From then on it was mistakenly associated with medieval times thanks to its spine-chilling design that fits the narrative of that era's supposed brutality. So, the Middle Ages weren't all about the metal after all. Alright, time for a recap. So we've traversed the winding roads of history, debunked some myths, and had a few hearty laughs along the way. Let's rewind a bit, shall we? First, we found ourselves in the Middle Ages, which, as it turns out, weren't that middle at all. This period had a bit of an identity crisis, but, hey, who are we to judge? Then, we met Napoleon, who was just a regular-sized guy with an oversized reputation. Sure, he might have had a complex, but it wasn't about his height. We took a leap to the Great Wall of China, which contrary to popular belief, is not a celestial landmark. Astronauts might have impressive views from space, but the Great Wall isn't one of them. Next, we ventured to the pyramids where we found out that slaves weren't the primary builders. It was a labor of love, or at least a labor of well-fed and cared-for workers. Our journey then took us to the Vikings, who, shockingly, didn't wear horned helmets. I know it's a bummer, but let's not let the truth get in the way of a good costume party. We then sailed with Columbus, who didn't discover America. Sorry Columbus, but the credit goes to the indigenous peoples and possibly a few Vikings. Who knew history could be so contentious? We then experienced some witch trials in Salem where, thankfully, no witches were actually burned at the stake. It's a relief to know that the people of Salem had some limits to their hysteria. Finally, we found out that the Iron Maiden was just a figment of our collective morbid imagination. It didn't exist in the Middle Ages. I guess they were too busy not being in the middle to invent such a thing. And there you have it folks, history debunked. Until next time, keep questioning everything.